Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week, and this is a show where I review all the comics I've read this week in one show. We go least favorite to best pick of the weekend, everything in between, and before I get started, at the end of the video, we talk about the viewer's pick of the week. So in the comments below, let me know your pick of the week for a chance to be featured on next week's episode. Let's jump in. I had a, a lot of bigger titles, but a, a smaller-ish haul, which is nine books, and number nine for me is Batman Absolute Power Tie-In, which is issue 151. Batman has not been doing it for me for a little while now. I like the first arc, which ships are Darsky, and then it kind of went off the rails for me. Specifically focus on that arc for a lot of issues, and, and for me, that kind of got me out of it. And now here, we, we're finally promised the mansion. We're, we're promised, uh, you know, maybe more of the Bat family, and we have to go to an Absolute Power tie-in that doesn't really do much for the series of Batman or Absolute Power. It's just a fun team up with Catwoman. And I don't love tie-ins like that. They feel a little fillerish to me. Big part is because Absolute Power is not that far in to really tell much of a tie-in. And that's why I don't think tie-ins need to be told right from the get-go. I just feel like this was a bit too fillerish and the artwork was just okay. So overall, giving that two stars and that's number nine. Moving on to number eight, which is the Incredible Hulk issue 15. Not much Hulk in this one. This is more about the, the mythos of the green door, things that were introduced in Immortal Hulk. There's some other monsters that are introduced and, and we get to see their story. But honestly, I just wanted more Hulk. I liked, I think it was an issue or two ago when it was just him and his brain where we get to see him interacting with Betty. The, that's where I liked that internalized storytelling. Here, I just thought it, it went a little bit off course to characters that I don't particularly care about right now. But the artwork was good. I like the concept of it. It just didn't entertain me as much as I wanted to. So overall giving that two stars and that is number eight. Moving on to number seven, which is Birds of Prey issue 12. This is a cartoony issue of Birds of Prey. It, it kind of reminded me of like that Nightwing might character that we, we had from a few months ago. And we get to see, again, a cartoon version of these characters as they try to save Barbara. I think if you've been liking Birds of Prey, you'll continue to like it. For me, I'm still trying to find its footing for me. I don't want to drop it because I like these characters, but... I haven't really been able to get into this one as much as I want to. Every single time you get comfortable, a new team comes along or Barbara kind of disappears and I want more of that character work that I enjoy about team team books. But I also do like that this book really looks different and why this is a bit higher is it, it tried something different with this cartoony take on the characters. So overall giving that two and a half stars and that is number seven. Moving on to number six. Speaking of Absolute Power, Absolute Power Issue 2. This event is interesting because obviously we know it's going to bring a bigger event along the way with All In. But I feel like we have so much with Absolute Power already. Again, I was talking about the tie-ins before and the promise of the All In stuff that I don't really know what this event is going to bring. I feel like it really is just scratch the surface and same here. Our work is good. There's an interesting enough conflict where we get to see the Titans want to be the new Justice League, which set up with death metal and we're, we're getting a little bit more of the aftermath of that, interestingly enough. We get some character work in that way with Superman missing John because John is being influenced by Amanda Waller. But Amanda Waller is a villain. Seen it before. Have we seen different versions of our favorite characters in a robotic way? Yeah, we've seen most of this stuff before. There's nothing, to me, that's too groundbreaking. And to me, that's very character-driven. Again, you have the moments with Superman and John, but it's maybe a page or two, and he's like, John, no! It's not really a big character moment or a big character story that I tend to like with events, but not a bad event in any ways. Again, I'm sure this will actually affect the DC Universe for what it's promised, but in issue two, I I'm, not, I'm not loving it just yet. But the artwork is really good for it, and there are better character moments than other events I've seen in the past. So giving that three stars, just kind of in the middle for me. Moving on to number five, which is Gotham City Sirens issue one. This is the new weekly series. I believe it's about five issues long. This one is very set up -y. Get to see where Harley is, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman. We know they're friends. They interact with each other. The most interesting part is something that's already been spoiled, which is Punchline's the villain for this one, or at least will be in the book and, and seemingly is the villain for this one. And obviously with the comparisons of Harley Quinn and her being the newest Batman female villain, that's interesting to me. That's something I'm interested to see 
believe what happens in issue two. But because it was spoiled already, we really knew Punchline was going to be in this book. It's like, okay, well, this feels like an issue zero more than an issue one. And honestly, that's the best way to put it. It felt like an issue zero more than the team coming together. Being a team, it, it just felt uh, like they were a bit too disconnected for me. Artwork was really good for this, though, especially for a weekly series that I feel like weekly series, the art tends to be very rushed because they have to finish it so quickly. And I, I didn't feel that with this issue. So overall, giving it three stars. And that is number five. Moving on to number four, Shazam! Issue 14, one of my favorite hero books out right now. And, and this is, again, a very reliable issue where we get to see Freddy deal with not having his powers in a world where he needs it. And people kind of look over him because he always has his head on his shoulders. And now we're kind of getting to see the aftermath of that. There's also some fun Mary and Billy interactions here. This issue didn't completely blow my mind. I think there's some good artwork and again, some fun superhero adventure. But I do feel like there's been stronger themes and character building in previous issues. But if you're a Freddy fan, I, I think that's probably what you get the most out of this issue. So giving that three and a half stars and then is number four. Moving on to number three, a book I was really pleasantly surprised by, and that is Spider-Man Black Suit in Red. We've been seeing a lot of these versions of these books with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Valiant Comics. I, I feel like every comic company has done these black, white, and red books. And honestly, the secret to these books is really, really good artwork. And that's something I got in every issue of this because of the very interesting color palette of white, black, and red. And also I like it picked a time that's not current for Spider-Man, like the, the suit. So we get to see MJ, we get to see what I thought was a really good opener, this minion type character and how being a minion has affected his life. I, I don't know if minion's the right word, to, but kind of, you know, this this secondary villain character and, and how that's affected him. And I, I like that story. I like the MJ story. And, and the other ones, like there's Spider-Man talking to the suit. I don't know if that was the one that hit the home the most, but it, it was at least interesting introspective. I think there's, I, I don't know if the dialogue completely soaked me into that one, but I thought it was an interesting concept and again, really, really good art. So it kind of did everything I wanted with this. And again, uh, is introducing a story we just haven't seen in a while from Spider-Man and not in the current Spider-Man for maybe people that are more nostalgia fans. So overall, giving that four stars, I actually thought it was a pretty solid issue. So that is number three for me. Moving on to number two, the most anticipated book of the week, I'm sure for most people, and that is Uncanny X-Men issue one, Gail Simone, Dave Marquez. I thought this was a really solid issue. For me, this is how I like team books to be done. I hate when there's 10 characters introduced, you don't know why, they're just kind of teaming up. These are characters that know each other very well already. So it's Wolverine, Rogue, and Gambit. Obviously, they all have a very good relationship with each other. And what this issue does, and it's a longer issue as well, it just focuses on them. They have some fighting with the dragon, but then there's also this really interesting character work that's being done about what happens after Kakoa, what happens when you had Utopia and it's taken away from you, and how do humans see you? Do all humans see you as a villain? All while there's these new mutants coming along and they don't even want to be X-Men. What's the X-Men after Krakoa without Charles Xavier? And it it's kind of redefines what this franchise can be, which is, I feel like this franchise has needed for a long time. And obviously Dave Marquez's artwork just nails the facial expressions, nails that action that's in this issue. And honestly, I just thought it was a really solid book that doesn't throw too much at you, but also doesn't throw too little at you. It does feel like things are being progressed and set up. So I like this issue. I thought it was really solid. And for me, I would say it was definitely worth the hype. So giving that four stars and that is number two. Moving on to number one which is a new book from Boom, Red Before Black, issue one. Didn't really know what to expect with this one, but I felt like I missed out by not reading Grimm with Stephanie Phillips. So I was like, you know what? New Stephanie Phillips book, new Boom book. Let's go check it out. And I liked it. It was just a really interesting, I almost want to say slow burn, but it, it also just thrusts you into the story where this woman has gone to jail. We don't know why. Uh, she has this friend, we also don't know how, why she's connected to, who is a mobster of some sort. You kind of find out they're not actually friends. And he says, hey, kill this girl. And he, she's like, I don't want to kill this girl. And you get the personality of the other girl through action. And then in the end, it's revealed that our main character is working with this, assumingly the, the FBI. Uh, so I, I liked it. I thought it, it revealed information in a really 
a solid way, which kept my interest throughout the whole entire book. The artwork fit really well for this. It was gritty, but not too gritty. Again, you really got to see those facial expressions. And I just want to learn more about this world, about these characters, and where these relationships go. I really feel like this is an issue about relationships, which is the comics I tend to like the most. So overall, giving that four stars, that is my pick of the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno. Let me know in the comments below what your pick of the week was. And last week's pick of the week from the viewers was... Gunbreed issue one, and here are some comments about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno, and I'll see you guys in the next one.